In this video, we are going to find the number of ending zero digits in the number 1000 factorial. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. Before I start solving the problem, I've listed the values of 1 factorial all the way up to 20 factorial for your reference. Just to let you have a rough idea of how do we get ending zeros for factorials. So as you can see, starting from 5 factorial, we have one ending zero digit in the, num in the value of 5 factorial, which is 120. And then the next time that I get an extra zero is that we multiply up to 10 factorial, which I have two zeros at the end. And then I need to wait until 15 factorial when I get the third ending zero digit. And then the next one will be at 20 factorial. And now we have four ending zero digits. So it's natural to think that after seeing these 20 numbers, that we will get an extra zero after multiplying by extra five numbers. As in, when we, whenever we reach the factorial of a multiple of five, I'll get extra zeros. So that I'm going to explain why do we really have that happening. Now to explain this phenomenon, let's take a look at what, is, what does it mean by adding an extra ending zero digit. This is actually, I should say, an extra ending zero digit, which means some number and then adding a zero at the end. This is actually equivalent to multiplying multiply by 10 or in other words if I'm just saying the fact that that number contains some ending zero digits it means contains factors 10 and in particular 10 it can be decomposed further decomposed into 2 times 5 so that means whenever I multiply some extra number and inside that particular number, it contains some um, prime factor 2 or prime factor 5. And whenever I can gather a pair of such prime factors, you can imagine there are lots of 2s over here, and then 5s around. Whenever I can gather one pair, I'm good to go. One extra 0 over here one extra zero over there, and so on. So as you can see, if I'm going to multiply all of these numbers together, I'm just actually grabbing pairs of fives and twos, some other color, and then we can create extra zeros at the end of the number. The next question is, whether it's easier to find prime factors 2 or prime factors 5 inside the product. And it's clear that because all even numbers contain um, 2 as a prime factor, while we need multiples of 5 to contain the prime factor 5. So it is quite clear that it is always easier to find prime factors 2 than 5 if we are working inside factorials when we are multiplying all natural numbers starting from 1 up to a certain number, say a thousand in our original problem. Say when we list out from 1 all the way up to 1000, it would definitely contain more even numbers than multiples of 5. So the problem can be degenerated into simply counting the number of factors, prime factors 5, that the product contains. Some of you may, may draw a conclusion that from, from what, what I've said just now, that because we add an extra zero when we multiply numbers up to 5, 10, 15, 20, and I said that it remains to count the number of prime factors 5 that's contained 
in the product. So some of you might think that it simply counts in multiples of five and then we are done. So that means the answer should be a thousand over five and that's equal two hundred. But actually it's wrong. Because by counting the number of prime factors, there are some special cases that we might get even more prime even more prime factors five. For example, we multiply up to 25 factorial. Notice that when twin for 25, we actually have 5 times 5. So inside, when we multiply this number, we're adding an extra 2 extra prime factors 5 into the product. So at this point, it should be adding 2 extra z ending 0 digits. And similarly, if I'm if I can reach fifty factorial, seventy five factorial, a hundred factorial, then it's still plus two, plus two, and plus two. So that means when we multiply numbers up to multiples of twenty five, then we will get extra ending zero digits. So, or maybe this word is a bit confusing. Just adding two and n zero digits, so altogether two, not one plus two equals three. So now, using a similar argument, we can say that when we multiply up to multiples of one hundred and twenty-five, then we will get three ending zero digits to be added. And if I can multiply up to the next power of 5, which is 1, 2, 5 times 5, and that's 6, 2, 5, then I'm getting 4 ending 0 digits. The meaning of this statement is that comparing the number of ending 0 digits in 6, 2, 5 factorial versus the number of the such number of ending zero digits in six two four factorial, then it should be four more zeros at the end. So from this we can now do the counting. So at first when we are looking at one thousand factorial, we have two hundred multiples of 5 and then for 25 we have 80 no, no, not 80 but 40 40 multiples of 25 and then 8 multiples of 125 and finally just one multiple of 625 so For the multiples of 5, 1 zeros is added for each multiple. And then for each multiple of 25, because we have already added 1 zero digit while counting multiples of 5 already. So because they each contribute 2 zeros, and we have counted one of them already, so we just add 1 for each of them, 1 extra. So altogether, 1 plus 1 equals two zeros contributed by each multiple of 25 and then similarly I again add one whenever I add an extra one whenever I meet a multiple of 125 because we have counted two of them already two out of three and finally when I come to number 625 I add one extra more ending zero digit so altogether the final answer should be 200 plus 40 plus 8 plus 1, which is 249. Before I end this video, I would like to make a little remark on how do we handle the case where for arbitrary natural number n. So we have just settled the case when n equals 1000, but now what happens if n grows larger and larger? Do we simply stop checking when we meet multiples of 625? Of course we do not do that. In fact, we actually check all powers of, of 5. So we start from 5, 
7.8.125 and so on. It's just that when n is 1000, we have some numbers here, some numbers here, not writing that again, but for the numbers afterwards, because it's already greater than 1000, so there are actually no such multiple, 0, 0 all the way. So that means we simply cannot count anything by considering further powers of 5. We just we are just keep adding zeros. So then we stop the calculations after considering multiples of 625. In fact, there is a general formula for such a calculation is that when we count the number of multiples of 5, 25, etc., we're actually doing this. We're actually dividing n by 5 and then taking the floor function. The floor function means the greatest integer that is less than or equal to the number inside. So that means for for example, if n is 1000, then it's of course 200, but if n is 1004, other dividing is 200.8, so it's still 200. Now we can do the same for other powers. And so on. And we're actually adding all of them together. It's just that if n is 1000, all such values under the floor function after six after divided by 625 and beyond are just zero. So we are not adding anything. But if n grows larger and larger, we have to consider more and more powers of five.